What's up, After Buzzers and Glow fans? I mean, if that's not terrifying enough. (laughs) (laughs) Glow season two for After Buzz is finally coming to an end, but we have one last big surprise for you, so stay tuned. You're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz <laughs> Great way to go out. Amazing With song. The theme song, yeah. With theme the song. But it started it all. It started it all. I can't take you seriously right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. This is a great way to culminate the entire season. What's up, After Buzzers? Thanks so much for joining us. Glow, your favorite time of week. And my name is Candace Cruz. I just want to jump right to it because we have an amazing guest with us today. So, Rick. And I'm Skeletor. Ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Little Egypt? Or, or Bill? Bill. Bill. Hi. Oh, hi Bill. <laughs> What's up, Bill? How's it going? No skull over here. <laughs> But your shirt looks nice. Thank you very much. You look great. I appreciate that. Hi, everybody. I'm Little Egypt. Bill is going to be fielding calls from our listeners today. So be oh, sure calls. to click. I mean, yeah. Chats. I'm Well, chats. chats live chats. chats. Okay. I was like, hey. I'm, I'm an eight. on the phone bank. I know, right? <laughs> I am such an 80 girl. I don't even know, like, what the new lingo is. So you're, you're so, But I am sitting next to a girl young enough that knows all the lingo. I'm Little <laughs> Egypt, everybody. And I get to welcome you and everybody to the show. We have with us Britt Barron, star Woo-hoo! of GLOW. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we're so glad you're here. This is so exciting. I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> thank you. Well, we're excited to have you, and thank you for coming for our finale. I, feel I like know. This is a great oh way to end the whole no season. No pressure, but. <laughs> None at all. None at all. But we, we, just, should, we yeah. just expect you to be the best yeah. guest we've had. Oh, my exactly. God. Oh, good. <laughs> low pressure. Well, you told me who pressure. the guests were. I can take yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know all the Mark, I'm gonna, Mark, I'm, I'm talking to you. I'll, I'll be asking that question later. Go ahead. Um, We've been watching you since the beginning. I mean, it has been such a treat. It was a real surprise when we first learned that you were the daughter of Sam no. Silva. Like, and we were going all the way back to Glow Season 1, but I have to tell you, it was a great relationship that started evolving back then, and it turned into, as we started watching Glow Season 2, just watching the father-daughter relationship. Mm-hmm. And I was so sad that at the end, you know, as much as Sam wanted you to stick around, the mom was just adamant about it. I know. I, I feel like in a sense, though, she, you have to do that. No yeah. normal responsible mother is going to let her daughter <laughs> stay around this like craziness <laughs> and kind of not even go to school. I mean, for a while she wasn't even going. So, right. uh, but the, their relationship, especially in season two, I think is just, was such a joy to, to play with because season mm-hmm. one, you barely... For so much of season one, Justine is like hiding who she is mm-hmm. from the other girls, from Mark or from Sam, and so, and that and that doesn't really drop until the very end of season one. Right. So season right. two picks up at such a different place for her, and it was just so much fun to get to see her kind of come out of her shell and be vulnerable and not be so incredibly uncomfortable right. and. Um, closed off. Well, it was definitely a coming of age for Justine throughout this entire season, and I know you guys had great reviews on your all's relationship, but what was it like for you kind of developing the character even more this season and playing around with her and figuring out like her highs and lows and everything like that? Well, I think I come from a theater background, Mm -hmm. so TV is still so challenging to me because we don't know where the story's going ever. I mean, I think but when we started Glow, I had only read the pilot and my audition sides, which then I think they didn't even make it into the season one. So like I knew I was Sam's daughter, but even going to season two, like I really didn't know anything. Thing. You oh, never wait, know. So you knew when the season started that you were like you didn't find out later on. I knew Carly and Liz, um, our showrunners, had we all had character meetings where they kind of will tell you this is this is where we see your character going. But a lot of times the stuff that we talk about in that meeting never, right. you know, gets cut along mm-hmm. the way because mm-hmm. the writers are updating the scripts, writing the scripts as we go. We get them week by week. So as an actor. It's it's challenging in a way where you think, okay, I, I'm going to make some choices, and then you get a script, and you're like, oh, I didn't really, I didn't see her that way, and you kind of have to play around with that. So season two was fun because 
I don't feel like you, I mean, maybe in the scenes with Billy in season one, you kind of get to see Justine be who she really is. But season two, it was just such a wonderful dynamic to play with Sam because Justine's coming from a standpoint of she's known about her father for years. She's idolized him. She's watched all of her films. She's she's like built up this moment her whole life. And Sam, on the other hand, had no idea she existed. So for him, he's on the other side of the spectrum where a, basically a 17-year-old stranger has moved into his house. So it was really fun to get to play like her wanting this father desperately and not understanding why he's just not being who she always thought he would be and him being like, listen, I'm doing my best. I'm just trying to catch up here. Um, and to get to see Sam kind of be like nicer because so true. much Very of true. Glow, he's just so brutal. Um, so it's it was like, a it's a really fun dynamic and Mark is like so wonderful and amazing in, in the show, I think. And you got um, to do a lot of scenes with him. I mean, yeah, I think most can, of my, yeah. I mean, especially season two, I'm, I'm mostly just with Mark and, yeah. and Allie, really. Mm. And what's that like? Because these are the two, like, leads of the it's, series. It was, season two filming was mm -hmm. drastically different for me than season one. Because season one, I was with, for a lot of it, I was kind of in the background in these group scenes. Mm -hmm. And so, which was perfect for me. This was my first, like, series regular kind of gig. And so... Mm -hmm. uh, and to be like, you know, I'm always with the girls and doing those big group scenes take forever to shoot because you need coverage of like 16 people. But it's fun. It feels mm. like camp and everyone's kind of joking around and it's like lower pressure because I maybe have two lines that day. So season two, all the girls would be shooting together and then and I, we're all in a group tag so I would see them posting and stuff and talking and then on their days off, I would go to work. And it was, it's like on set with just Mark and me or Mark and Allie and, which was fun, but it's just such a different dynamic. It's so mm. much quieter. It's much more like, and I I would have like a real scene begin, you know, beginning <laughs> to finish where a guy had lines and it was fun. It was more challenging, I think. But um, I missed like the girls in a way, you know, cause we are just friends. Like part of the best part about shooting glow is, all of the girls, you know, so I did miss that selfishly as Brit, not as Justine. You know, it's like so, wait, so were you bummed uh, for that final scene when like they're in the bus and yes. they're playing Starship and like you're not oh, there? Yeah. So. Are you kidding me? I was bummed during the mall. They were shooting that on my birthday, and I was like, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Like, I was bummed. Yes, I did mean, you but, go on set for your birthday? No, like, oh, no. I know. Uh, I so you weren't that bummed. I was at Disney, so oh, there you go. good dream, good dream. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I just from like the actor standpoint, it's it, uh, I was like, oh, bummed out. But on the other hand, it was such a joy to be able to like mm -hmm. really have scenes, mm -hmm. you know, really like dig in with Mark and kind of develop a relationship. And I, I think it came at the right time where I was like more comfortable on camera and. Yeah. So uh, so this was a season where we didn't get to see you really taking bumps in the ring, but we did see you in a brawl. How was oh, that? Yeah. That was so fun. That you was really, my yeah. favorite scene I've ever shot of GLOW. Okay, tell us why. Because I train with the girls, season yeah. one and season two. We train for, for, for four weeks. I'm always there. Season two, I had even asked, I asked Shauna Duggins, who's our stunt coordinator, like, am I wrestling this year? Because I didn't really wrestle last year. And she was like, yeah, we've talked to the writers. Like, they definitely want you in training. So I was like, yes. <laughs> so even though it ended up not making the cut, like so much doesn't. Because I think one of the strengths of the show is that it's only 30 minutes and mm -hmm. it leaves the audience. It's like a really fun watch where you're not like checking your clock to see you know i'm like yeah. i feel like yeah. some shows now i'm just like oh my god yeah. it's like 11 o'clock is this still going on i love that glow is like a quick episodes but at the same time you have to cut a lot of stuff so i was so excited to get to do that that scene and we didn't use my stunt devil that was all oh. me and i was just like i felt like it was two years <laughs> building up where i felt like that was my moment in a way of the closest i've gotten to being in the ring plus those are like I've never gotten into a bar fight. So those are one of those moments as an actor where you're like, I would always, I always like wonder what it would be like to be this kind of person. And so to get to like act that out without the real life consequences was. Oh, yeah, real life consequences. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like it was, it was just so fun. And I love, I just love that whole scene. Like the punk rock. I mean, oh, yeah. the, the, the set that they build and like. The background I thought were so phenomenal, like the 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 hair and the oh, makeup yeah. and oh, yeah. 
It was that was probably that was probably my favorite episode, honestly, mm. um, for my for my character. Oh, well, you know, you know, every episode where it features me a lot, that's that's my <laughs> favorite episode too. So I totally understand what you're talking about. I mean, uh, while we're talking about the brawl, uh, Tristan <laughs> R uh, is asking you, uh, did you get to take home a shit pope shirt? No, <laughs> which is my biggest regret of Aww. season two because. There were hundreds of them. There oh. were so many. I need to reach out to Beth Morgan, who's our costume um, designer, and see if there are any more lines. I should have just snagged one. No yeah. one would have noticed. I don't know what I was thinking. Sometimes I, because you're going to set every day, in the moment, you like forget. You're you concentrating know. your performance yeah. on what's, yeah. I'm not thinking about like, tomorrow. hey, in a few months, this will be so right. awesome, you <laughs> know? So um, I know, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't even feel like I take enough pictures. Some of the other girls are better at that than <laughs> I am. Um, well, if we get a season three, that... Yeah, if you mean when. I'm going to grab a shit when, pope shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a funny band name, too. Yeah. I don't know who came up with that, which writer. <laughs> but it's amazing. I yeah. It's very 80s. Oh, my God. And when Casey... Casey, um, he, What is his line? He's like, this is morning in America, morning with a U. That's like how he opens the yeah. song. And I was just like, oh, my God. This is just so perfect. It's so like teenage angst, you know, where you feel like you're yes. so badass. But... As an adult, you're like, oh god. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I mean, so when, so what, like, what wrestling move do you like? Like, like you when you're training behind the scenes, like you're like, I was, I'm really good at this one. I feel like season one, I felt really strong about uh, the front th three quarter flip. I like loved doing that, and I think that was something that I never thought I'd be able to do because mm -hmm. I did like I was a dancer growing up, and I did some gymnastics, but I could never really do like a back handspring or mm -hmm. any like flippy stuff. So that was I loved doing that, and I felt strong with that. And then season two, I think it was uh, I in the pilot episode when Betty and Allie have their uh, fantasy fight sequence. Allie does like the up and over. Yeah. And I just was dying to learn that. So one day Chavo, who trains us, was like, "Does you know, what do you guys want to learn? And I got to learn that. And it was so Amazing. fun. And it's like, it's harder than it looks. It looks like you're just like, you know, running into the ring and jumping over backwards. But you have to like get your butt really high up in the air. I loved it. I mean, I, I, I like when we get to like choose what to learn. So you're, believe it or not, I mean, I've always thought it doesn't matter if you're in the indies, if you're on, if you're with one of the big promotions, if you take a bump in a ring, you're a wrestler. So oh. you're a wrestler, my friend. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. How That's does true. it feel? I don't feel like I'm a wrestler, because when I've seen professional wrestling, I'm like, holy crap, I cannot do that. You could eventually. But you could eventually, if we, yeah. if, if that's what you wanted. But I, I love that you girls are actually learning from Shavo what it's like to respect the industry, what it's like to learn these moves in a safe environment, and then you know just being able to execute. I love that we get to watch you guys evolve in your wrestling, like watching, you know, uh, we talked about Kate Nash and her ability to do a drop kick now is getting better. Yeah. And like, what's going to come in season six, you know? Like, well, what I level are you like guys going to be at? The show wouldn't be the show if mm -hmm. we weren't doing our own stunts. You know, mm -hmm. like, if we weren't mm -hmm. actually doing the wrestling moves, I think it would just be such a different... Because it was... It was inspired by the real, you know, something that really happened. So right. I think it was so important, and I love that Liz and Carly have us all training and doing all of our own moves because yeah. I mean this was real and in a sense I feel like especially in season one I was just so aware we were reliving what you guys went through I mean obviously in a much like safer cushier way where we have like mats and we have like breaks and when I watched the documentary I was like oh my god this was so much more brutal <laughs> than what we've gone through but you know, I think it's important that we are taking our own bumps on yeah. camera and that mm -hmm. it's not like, okay, now our stunt double walks in and does it. Like, yeah, I feel like so much of my experience kind of mirrors what Justine is going through and what, in a sense, like the real original Glow Girls went through. You know, it was like no basis of wrestling and you, <laughs> yeah. you, you're just kind of like, oh, great, yeah. it's a job. I'll figure it <laughs> out. Like... Yeah, and it, and it made us so much closer as as a cast because when you're like in each other's you know armpits. like armpits and stuff <laughs> and, and you have to like yeah, and yeah. you have to trust uh -huh. one another like yeah. okay I'm gonna flip you over yeah you have to yeah. like go with me otherwise we're both gonna break our necks is right. 
you no just pressure. get so yeah, but you you do become closer in a sense than I think just like showing up on set and doing a scene. Right. And yeah. what I what I really love hearing because we've had a lot of you girls in here, even Mark, is that you guys. It's not about just running lines. You know that no. you guys in the back of your head. In, you know I've heard a lot of girls say that the thought has come through that this really did exist at one time in our history. Like this nutsiness was really happening to a group of girls. I know, it's it's really, it's un, it's unbelievable. And that's what I love when people who talk to me about the episodes, they'll be like, I didn't understand. Like I was just talking to someone who was like, I, I didn't get the Vegas thing. Where are they going to, and I was like, no, I think it's, that really happened. Like I think I love, I love when I get each new episode and they've incorporated things from the original. Yes, mm -hmm. in a like, yeah. oh, because after you watch the documentary, like even this season, I know they wanted Kate to have a horse season one, but mm -hmm. that got cut. I don't think that got cut. But I'm so happy that like it kind of was incorporated in season two because mm, you're like, yeah. that really happened. There's all these like kind of nods to the original. Right, um, right. And it's just so, it's like surreal that you guys went through that. Right. It's surreal sitting next to Brit, actually, going <sighs> 30 years later, I'm talking to an actress okay. who's ta talking about a show that existed back in 1986. I mean, 89. No, six, yeah, 86, 86. to 86 to 89. Crazy. That's crazy. Crazy. That's like, that's why I'm doing the show. Because <laughs> I want to bridge that gap. I want to help people go down that rabbit hole. You were talking about the documentary. It's also streaming on Netflix. It's called Glow, the Story of the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. So if you if you like the series, my God, check out the documentary. It'll be so worth it. It really, I mm -hmm. mean, it's so, I feel like for people that have watched the show and then found the documentary, it's like, eye-opening in a yeah. sense because some yeah. people I don't think even know that it's yeah they the, don't no, I don't which is so. crazy which is yeah. crazy to me um at what point did you visit the documentary then like during training because I had 48 hours before I when I I was the last one cast so I found oh, out wow. on a Saturday night when I was wow. babysitting that I got this part and they and my paperwork hadn't even gone through fast enough so I missed the first day of training I came mm. on Tuesday so probably halfway through training, people were talking about the documentary. And at that time, it wasn't on Netflix. So I, I think oh, I really? like, bought it on Vimeo oh, or something. Oh. Um, and and But I knew that there was an original glow because in our audition, it said, you know, well, this is a female wrestling show. And uh, in the 80s, this was based on a real thing. Did they send like, you look a it clip? Up. Yes, they sent us like a link. credits? Gosh, I wonder, it was a YouTube link. I don't, it might have been the opening credits, but I know I just started, because if you go to like one, there's like a ton yeah, of right. 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 Yeah. I mean, like just the sketches, you're just, <laughs> I was like, what the hell is this thing? Like, it's not just wrestling, it's like rapping and, and like sketch comedy <laughs> and, and it was more than just wrestling, which I, yeah. I like love, and that's what I loved about uh, episode eight. Right. Because you kind of get to see like, it wasn't just wrestling. It was kind of like a variety show in a, in a way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. yeah, so I I've just enjoyed like the original glow being like sprinkled in in certain like nods cuz for fans yeah. there's a lot of fans who watch, who like love the original glow who you know watch the show just because of that and I think get excited as I do when they like write in things like Kate's horse or or I feel like there've been a lot of other nods um, to the original. Yeah. So wait, so yeah. you so you get the call to go audition and then 2 days later it's like you booked it? No, no, wow. no. I had I had um I had one audition with Jen Houston who was casting. It was just me and her and we put it on tape and then a week later I got a call back. Um and it was I I mean I had like no time. It was a call back and I had like the evening to prepare completely new sides. My first ep uh first audition was for Jenny the cheerleader, which I think some of the other girls was it? Jackie talked no Jackie talked about that last week right. about how they were how she was like cuz she she was like I actually I, I did a lot of Ruth sides and like some characters weren't developing. She talked about a cheerleader and I sat here mm -hmm. and I was like who in the hell is the cheerleader? Yeah. So it's yeah. amazing yeah. that you bring that, that you're bringing that up right so now. So I I mean I had like Justine sides, but then we all had to do our our kind of wrestling I guess it was supposed to be a rap, 
but I was like, I'm definitely not going to rap that because I, the <laughs> rapping was like strange, like off yeah. beat, like no offense. No, it was like, strange. I was like, I it can't. Was beat. I'm not going to do that. I'm not a singer. I'm not like a musical. So I just performed it like a monologue, like a yeah. wrestling oh, monologue. Great. But the first one was cheer- the cheerleader. So I went from doing these like angsty teen scenes to being like, I'm Jenny cheerleader. Like I did a full like had choreographed. And then I got my call back and it was a completely different wrestling character. It was like Scab, who I who ended up being my character, right. punk rocker and uh, completely different. So I think they were kind of across the board or using like dummy sides in a way. But mm. I just had a call back with um, Genji and, and our showrunners and um, maybe one of our writers. It was all women, I remember, on a couch. It was like six women, which I had wow. never seen. In all, that's I, incredible. In all of these callbacks, that's what I remember the most about that callback. I think I called my mom and was like, yeah, well, well there were all, it was all women in the room, awesome. which is never. Yeah. Awesome. But I also didn't, that was it. So I just had that one callback and then, and it was quick. So I, I like didn't understand when I got the call but you booked a role. Yes, and it was only most, And you're babysitting, you, you said, right? I actually, like, I told my manager I couldn't talk for 30 minutes. I was like, I gotta put the baby down. Like, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to... <laughs> and I, like, didn't understand. And he, was, he responded to me, like, K, period. And I was like, oh my God, oh, am I mad? Just, no, 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 I no, thought no, he was mad. I was like, what have I done? Did I say something stupid publicly? Like, what have I... I thought I was in trouble. And then I got in the call and it was like, oh, my agents. And I was up in Sherman Oaks. I have no service, so I could, they were like cutting in and out. All of them were on a group conference yes, call. Yes, on a Saturday oh night. You know that's that that's a big, a big deal. deal when yes, all of them are on a phone call with you. I had only had two. I had had like a small. I guess it was confusing because I've gone so far in other projects sure. that I haven't gotten that you. Yeah. But it probably worked out for the best because I think the more callbacks I have, the more nervous I get. Like I've I've developed a really good sense of. You go into the room, I, I leave the room, and I move on with my day. I'm yeah. not, I don't like sit yeah, around and hard. think about yeah, it. That's right. like almost, I feel like a skill you need to learn as an actor. Yes. Um, but when, you know, when you're on like your fourth callback, that's when I start mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. you really want it. You're like, this could change my life. Like, I love this part. But for that, for Glow, it was like one call. I was like still like, all right, you know, I was auditioning for other stuff. I didn't, I I didn't realize that would be my final, the final step. I didn't realize I, they were like starting that Monday. You weren't um, babysitting anymore. Wow. You, yeah, you I had well, like, I mean, I mean, I yeah. I gotta put my two weeks in. Um, but we were also only, <laughs> almost all of us were only signed on for the first four episodes. Right. Really? So okay. even at that point, while I was super excited for me, that was a huge, still a huge deal to be, mm. you know, four episodes on this really cool new Netflix show. I still, I never really had that like falling to your knees moment of like oh my oh like like Jackie like, yeah Jackie came on last week and she said she was crying when she got the news okay yeah I didn't I was first of all I didn't understand I, right yeah right. I didn't understand I get and it, yeah. then I was like okay the first four episodes that's great each week I was kind of like hope hope we're still here next week like <laughs> I don't know <laughs> even though I knew I was Mark's or I was Sam's daughter I still I Shoot I'm so throw. like yeah. um. I'm just very like aware of the business and I feel like mm. ha- I'm always like setting myself up for the worst so that I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah. So I think <laughs> even though I knew like I think I'm going to be around because they have to reveal I'm his daughter, I still was like I might as well soak it up because I might not be in the next episode. Mm. I'm only I won't. so I, yeah, I don't know. It was kind of like a gradual just experience slow, where you so start good. realizing yes. like this is a really huge deal. This is, you know, so it's very surreal. It was. It kind of came on gradually, though. I was like, thro- I feel like I was thrown onto like a very move, a moving train. Mm. So I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't get to watch the documentary till like weeks into training. I, wow. didn't, I like caught up as we were going. So I've been, I've been dying to ask you this question. Uh, so I was, I was at the season one carpet. I didn't get to talk to you there, and then at Muscle Beach. I meant to ask you, and like later on, I was like, "Stupid, stupid!" Because oh, like, no, yeah. it's, no, it's one of those things where it's like, "Oh!" But this is this is what's great, actually. So when we had Mark on, I asked him this question, yeah. And so now we have you. So it's like episode seven or episode eight, season one, and you like you open the script up and you start reading, and you know it's like, okay, so like Sam is like depressed because he finds out that Back to the Future, his dream project, is actually a real movie. So then you're going in there to tell him, "Hey, so I'm going to be your daughter," and then all of a sudden it's like, "Oh!" And now Mark Maron has to kiss. You. I mean, when you read the script, you're kind of like, what? I 
Well, because I knew it was coming the whole time, every script I got, I was like, is this the one? Is this the one? Like, I had no idea how they were going to do it. So I actually thought it was brilliant. When I read the the script and, that, and it ends like that, I thought, like, it's just another example, I think, of how strong our writers are. Yeah. Because yeah. it's you set the audience up for thinking the whole season it's basically set up to think that Justine is just like in love with him right. yeah um mm-hmm. there's so much of the right it was just like breadcrumbs this whole time to kind of misdirect the audience so mm-hmm. I thought it was I mean it was like obviously it's gross it's I'll tell you what though Mark came here and he said he says like I didn't think about it because it's just it's acting and I've kind of just got to do the thing but he actually threw it back to you to say that like it was really on you and how you sold it is what made that scene really good in terms of like I mean because he was just like it wasn't like a long kiss or anything no like, no, no but, but like but just barely... do yeah I know but just like but he said it, like you how you sold it is exactly what was like needed for that scene and like and then you did that and so it was perfect so, it like, was a really it was a great I mean Lynn Shelton directed it and she's directed other episodes in season two. Um, It was like such a, it was one of my favorite scenes to shoot because it was so intimate. Most of Glow is shot like in the gym, in these big sets or or at the the hotel. And and that scene in particular is like in this tiny bedroom. We have the whole crew basically in there all like quiet in the corner. (laughs) And like Mark and I are just, you know, right here. It just was like a very, it was like such a different, very different than most of the scenes I had I had done on the show, and it was just a it's it's kind of heartbreaking for her mm-hmm. because she's just you just I feel I feel for her so much. She's so excited, and it's the moment that she's been waiting for, and she's finally alone with him, and it just goes like so horribly. <laughs> like honestly, what could have been worse? You know, like your dad turning to kiss you. But Mark is, I mean, he's just such a professional. It was yeah. never, I was joking around that I got to like second base with Mark Mary. Uh. <laughs> like, I mean, tick that off the list. You there know? You go. So, yeah, he, it was not like weird. It wasn't like a long. No, it wasn't. It was no, he said the like, same thing. No, yeah, <laughs> he, he said the same thing it wasn't. But it just, it's one of those things I was just like watching. I was like, I wonder what's going through their mind when they're reading the script or when you're on set. It's like, hmm. I, yeah. I kissing and stuff doesn't, that to me is like easy part mm-hmm. when I'm doing scene. Like, I've, I, I'm like, okay, that's fine. That's that's a part of I'm I'm not worried about. It's the acting that I'm like, okay, we have to hit that beat. How are we gonna get we have to make sure that dynamics right? That's what I was honestly way more stressed about and focused on than mm. he like I said, he said you, he thought you did great. With he it, was so. I mean phenomenal in that scene. Plus I just the realization that his crazy movie is back to the future. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just think that is so <laughs> laugh out loud, brilliant, <laughs> funny. Like He's he's describing this insane. You're like, wh- who would make that movie? And then when they're like, yeah, that movie's made. You're like, oh my god, how did they pitch Back to the Future? <laughs> like, <laughs> someone was like, that's a crazy idea. Let's do it. Yeah, and then it became <laughs> Back to the Future, one of like a you know classic. Yeah. I love, I love. I mean, the writing is just the strongest part, I think, or one of the strongest parts. Absolutely. Well, you guys play a huge role in that. I mean, obviously, like, the the lines are incredible. Like, the the story is incredible. But you guys do bring that to life. And, you know, kudos to you guys because you all were nominated for so many different Emmys. Ten. 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 It's amazing. Like, (laughs) dream thing because you're literally babysitting. This is your first big role. And then now, two seasons later... Like you, may, I I know that it's kind of up in the air whether or not you get to go, but the fact that you and your entire like team is nominated just has to be like surreal. It's, I mean, this is like truly the dream, mm-hmm. and I think it's just so it's so crazy to me because there's so much television on. Mm-hmm. Um, to choose from. Now, I just yeah. feel yeah. so lucky to be on a show that I not only believe in, but a show that I would have watched. Mm-hmm. Like whether I felt like that at the audition. I, I was already a fan of Genji. I was I finished season four of Orange the night before I found out I booked Glow. Like I was like, you know what? If I don't get this, I'm gonna watch that show regardless. Mm-hmm. Like I just feel and and it's so hard to know as an actor, like, should I pursue this? Like there's no promise. You could be the best actor in the whole wide world and it still could not work out because some of it is just luck. Like, mm. it is, some of it's just like right place, right time, right part. And so I just, I mean, a week, literally a week before Glow, I called my mom. I just, I backpacked through Europe for a month. I had this like come to Jesus, like, 
I'm not sure if maybe I should go get a real job and like have like a salary and not worry <laughs> like not be like doing laundry of like poopy you know underwear from little boys like I like that was my life like I remember before maybe a week before glow setting up a new apartment being at target i forgot to get validated i already spent like over a hundred dollars in new cleaning supplies and the woman was like you gotta pay twenty dollars you didn't get validated and i just sobbed because for me twenty dollars i was like i just got that. everybody just, sobbed yeah. nobody likes paying oh, one dollar for validation yeah like I... distraught so yeah. it was just such like it's Sometimes I feel like the universe, like when you need it the most, comes through because yes. I really was like, you know, I gave acting a shot. I feel like I've had some success. I've proven to myself I can do it, but maybe I'll go, I'll just like be a normal person and, and yeah. like have a you know a job. Now you're scab on glove. Um, yeah. So it all it really it's just very it's like a dream. Yeah. It's hard to believe that this is real. Like yeah. I cannot believe ten Emmys. It's just. <laughs> How do you like being just everywhere? So I mean, all the notoriety now because of the show. I mean, like, you know, all of you like like just being asked to come in like different shows and everything, like coming to After Buzz. I'm, I'm so excited. Like, it's it's so cool to me. This is like, this is, I'm not over this at all. You know, I would mm-hmm. talk about Glow and about acting and about forever. I mean, hopefully this never gets old. It's just like, this is kind of... This is exciting. This is like a real, I'm still like, I still feel like this is all new and really cool. And um, I, I like love doing this stuff. Do you have but any, I don't uh, feel like my life has changed. I don't, I'm never recognized. I don't feel like, like Glow is amazing. My career is different for sure. But I don't feel like overall on a day-to-day basis, my life is any different really. Other than like maybe some slight validation that a lot of actors are are in need of that maybe I was yeah. looking for prior to Glow. Mm-hmm. Bill, did you have a question or something from the chat too? Uh, I had a few questions, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I just heard you over there. I was like, we kind of left Bill out. No, we kind of okay. like throw him in there. No, I'm enjoying the conversation. Uh, well, Tristan uh, asked in the chat, uh, in your opinion, the best or most impactful uh, episode of season two. Mm. Oh, gosh. Hmm. That's hard. I guess overall, overall, I feel like episode eight was just in terms of like the creative standpoint i i applaud our writers for doing that because i know i knew reading it i was like this is not going to be for everyone some people but i love i feel like we're not our, the show does not like keep it safe by any means mm-hmm. and i loved the fact that we get to see everyone kind of be like their clowniest self yeah. um and i guess for me i would say episode 9 mm-hmm. when you meet my mom and I mean, Sam and Justine have that moment in the prom, which I feel like is just so on the nose, which I feel like I needed to hear at that. I I mean, I feel like I could always hear that where he's just like, you know, stop, stop following Billy. Stop following me. Like be your own person. Be, be your own person. Do you, I feel like in the age of like social media, it's so easy to like compare constantly, especially as an actor, Mm -hmm. constantly compare yourself to like, well, I, it never is good enough. It's like you the standard just keeps getting higher. Well, I'm not on that show. Well, I'm not going to. I feel like everyone needs to kind of put on blinders a little bit and just like appreciate everyone else's work, but like do you. And I, I like loved that prom moment. Um, such a like, nice. And like Sam comes so far to be able to give her advice versus mm-hmm. like where we started. In <laughs> <season one. laughs> The actress that plays your mom, super believable. Oh my like, gosh, was oh, that an awesome yeah, cast? Oh yeah, and you guys work so well together. It's it was like a, a totally really fun. That. It was, a, and I mean, Liz Flayhive and Carly Mensch, our showrunners, mm-hmm. had talked to me about how important they really wanted to see Justine as like a teen, yeah, mm-hmm. a teen. And mm-hmm. I feel like when she's fighting with her mom, yeah, that is the most. I mean. I'm so embarrassed to say, but I've like probably yelled at my mom. Like my mom's my best friend. I talk to her every day. (laughs) That's why they're parents. Yeah, Yeah. I'm like my worst self with my family because you know they're gonna love you. So her just like, you know, their whole dynamic of like screaming at each other. I was like, I mean, she's Justine's kind of like awkward and uncomfortable in her own skin a lot of the time, and to see her be like. No, I know it's a, you don't know what's right. You don't know what's right for me. I'm an adult now. I mean, it was it was fun to play that because she cares so much. I mean, she, I think she's way more solid in her relationship with her mother than she is obviously with Sam, where she wouldn't like scream at Sam. And in the right. beginning of season two, you kind of see her be like, 
like what are we like what are we doing are you gonna buy groceries versus like <laughs> she's not like right doesn't come hot out of the gate like come on dad you know yeah. <laughs> she's not as comfortable she's so still desperate for him to love her um mm-hmm. so it's fun to play that different dynamic and the their weird family <laughs> relationship yeah we've talked a lot about how season two is so good because season one we get to get everything in place and understand who all the people are and then everyone in season two has an evolution or, or mm. has, has something where they grow or evolve or adapt and for you and and uh and sam it's it's very interesting to watch because what you're seeking from sam is not only the approval of your father but also you're sort of looking for the opposite of your mother so you're like i want someone to just leave me alone yeah but Sam's so far in that direction that he is completely leaving Justine alone mm-hmm. that it's it's they have to come together and he has to learn about how to be a father and you really have to learn about how to be a daughter. Yeah, well, I think it's so interesting because I mean, we all go through this in terms of like when you when you cre- when you I don't know, create certain expectations, whether it's like what you think a job is going to be like, what you think a relationship is going to be like, what your, you know, your boss is going to be like. And she clearly has that. She has certain expectations that are not being met. And it's kind of like, how do you work through that? I mean, I've had that even with Glow where you, you know, it's, it's once you're living it, it's very different than, than how you thought it would all be and Mm -hmm. whether for better or for worse, you know? So, um, I think it's like you get to see her grow through that and and mature in terms of like okay let's meet halfway maybe you're not you're never going to be like number one dad of the year but there's a give and take um yeah but I think I I hope that if we get a season three I feel like (laughs) there's still so much that we could learn about all of these characters like we're still I mean, I, I, I'm <laughs> totally. Total, first of all, I love Vegas in real life. Like, I was there, <laughs> I was there for a week. I was there for Whoa. a week this year. I don't even think I got drunk. I was just like, I went to go see Love. I was, I've been like, I went in fifth grade for a dance competition with my family, and I thought, I like didn't know Vegas was a party town. I thought it was like <laughs> Disney. I was like, this is amazing. Like, I'm dance all here. these Disney Vegas, for adults. It, yeah. I was like, there are these themed hotels. And I mean, I love Vegas, so I hope we would get to actually shoot. I mean, even though it looks so different now, but... Good old Vegas. But there's so much to learn about all of these characters. And I actually think that's one of the strengths of the show, that people, like, the biggest thing I get from people is, like, I want more. I want to learn. I want. I wanted more. I want to learn more about these people. Um, Wait, anybody, anybody, like just in the moment, stick out for a second. Where you're just kind of like, oh, I would love to see like that story. Like who, like who this person is, or that, or that. Because we got a little bit of that with uh, Kia. Yeah, Kia yeah, and yeah. T- and her characters, Tammy, Welfare and Queen. And I feel like everyone talks about that episode. That was also an, a brilliant Absolutely. episode. Yeah. Episode mm-hmm. four. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh my god, heartbreaking yeah. when when. Yeah. Tammy's in the ring and they're like, get a job. I was like, oh my, I was oh. in tears. So beautiful. Yeah. I, I'm i like, that's amazing. The audience response to that episode, I think just shows me, I think the strength, another strength of the show is this like amazing ensemble cast of like misfits that are all so unique, so different. I would love to get to know more of them outside of the ring. I, I mean, mm. I don't think that our showrunners want it to be like Orange is the New Black and with like flashbacks and but I would just whether it's like through wrestling or through Vegas or through not I mean I think the more that we have substantial stories and we get to learn about these characters I think the more interesting and like strong the show is Mm -hmm. um because everyone is so amazing and Jen Houston who cat she's just like does a phenomenal job clearly if you look at like, what, she she, her, what else yeah, is right, she's yeah, cast she got, yeah she's got her a nomination yeah. too you're like oh you're really good at this job <laughs> Uh, uh, we do have another uh, question in chat real quick. Uh, Jay Becker wants to know, uh, how much prep work did you do for your role? Did you write out a backstory for your character? Did you interview people about this decade you weren't alive in? That you... <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, I didn't really interview people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think I think I've, through, like, pop culture, I have enough of a reference to understand mm-hmm. the, it's not like a, it's a different planet. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, what was life like? If you, if you Kirk Frankie goes to Hollywood. Like, I know, okay, a Walkman. Like, I knew, you know, a cassette <laughs> tape. Like, I know what that is. Um, I watched certain documentaries. I was, like, less familiar with punk rock, the 80s punk mm-hmm. rock scene. Mm-hmm. So I had, I had like, certain books. Um, 
uh, interviewing bands. Um, there were certain documentaries. Uh, Kate Nash made like made me a playlist of <laughs> of female punk rockers awesome. that she Uh-oh. thought Justine would like. I should like release that. I bet I X have it somewhere. And X respects. Um, and... Yes, and and Jesse Peretz, who directed our pilot, also he was in the Lemonheads, so awesome. he's like an actual oh. back in the day before he became this like really successful director. So he was like he loved I mean a lot of Justine's outfits are even based on on photos of him like the you make me sick he made that shirt and mm. the lock the lock necklace that oh, I wear awesome. he had that Beth our, our oh. costume designer based on um, based that off of so I had a lot of help in terms of figuring her out but at the end of the day I was really concerned with like the character um and I, there was a lot to learn. I mean, the the whole documentary. I was watching a ton of YouTube videos, <laughs> but it was also as we were going. It's not like I had. I unfortunately didn't have months to prepare for Glow. Right. I was like, right. all right, we're shooting, and I'm still reading this book and trying to figure it out. But Liz and Carly didn't want me to get too wrapped up in um, 80s 80s films and and being obsessed with like knowing everything about punk punk music. Okay. They were like. She's really just a teen, you know. Mm-hmm. She it's still that like I don't want to say poser, but Right. You like it cuz everyone else likes she, it. Yeah, yeah, she's trying to be something that maybe she's she might not fully be um they really were like because Jesse, well, Jesse was also in the meeting, so he was like listing off all these bands, and they were like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" Like, you're really just a teen. Like, we got to focus on on who you are as a person. Um, yeah. Well, like all teens, like all groups of people everywhere, like they fall in with something that they think will signal their personality. Or yes. Whatever. So it, on that on that note, as a teen, what were some of the things that you signaled? Like, what were some of the subcultures that you got into? So I. I live with two um, two guys that I went to high school with, mm. and I I feel like sometimes I think maybe before season two I was like I struggling. I feel like gosh, I'm so far from I'm not Justine at all. I'm so far from her. <laughs> like I, I'm not badass. I'm not this cool. And they were like, Brit. In high school, yes, you were. Like you, I had like my nails black. I had my first <laughs> pair of Converse. I listened to all these like emo like spill canvas i went to like bamboozled where i was mm. like mosh pitting i just feels like a different me in a way but that's like mm. kind of the cool part about that age you're you're like a chameleon of yeah sorts. you yeah. are yeah. a chameleon yeah. you're like i feel you kind of adapt to whichever group of friends you're with at mm-hmm. the time like i was with the theater kids one day and then i'd be with like the jocks the next like yep. you're really figuring out who you are still at that point um so I guess I did have some Justine, probably a little bit more like theater nerdy though, mixed awesome. in than she, awesome. than she was. Uh, I did have one more question. Um, you got to be involved with some of the WWE stuff yeah. that uh, has been happening with Glow. Can you tell us about what those experiences were like? I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling growing up, <laughs> mm. and I'm mm. like such. It like upset me, mm. honestly. Like I, I come from a huge hockey family, so we we had <laughs> tickets to the Ranger games, and I'll never forget my first Ranger game, watching a fight and people like, yeah, beat his ass, and I was like horrified, <laughs> upset to my core. Like wrestling, I didn't understand. I didn't, I didn't understand. It was so upsetting to me that people would want to like fight. So mm. your family only wanted you to watch real fighting. I mean, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I guess they're like they're whole. No, no, we don't. We don't well, watch wrestling. Watch these guys fight on the ice with knives on their feet. I mean, but not watch yeah. this guy's body. Slams. I also wasn't. Around, I didn't watch like an R-rated movie until like way late. Like, but once I was training, I mean, going to a wrestling show. There's. I just have such respect, right? and I'm so defensive yeah. now when people are like, "Oh, oh yeah, it's fake." I'm like, <gasps> it is not fake. There's nothing fake about a bump. Like or no, it, flip yeah. or jumping right. off the ropes, like right. you're doing it safely. I just, it's like a sport, which mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't understand. And I, I, I have wrestling is so incredible to me because it's athletic and it's also theatrics. It's kind mm. of like the, like for me, I'm like these are two things that I, I love. I feel like so many times you're either like an athlete or you're the crazy girl doing like monologues right. in, in yes. the corner. Mm-hmm. Um, and wrestling's so cool because, especially with like Glow or, or, or modern day wrestling too, you play these characters, you know, and they're huge stadiums. The first wrestling show we saw was at the Staples Center and it was mm-hmm. packed. Mm-hmm. I mean, to the brim, like a Justin Bieber concert. Yeah. And so you're performing 
to the the you know the balcony the back row of the balcony which is it was just so exciting and the fans are like it's just such a cool energy i have just such a newfound respect and part of that is because chavo our trainer has like the, i think the way he's taught us and through his stories um and through meeting like you guys and and, and realizing like how much goes into it and how how much worse it was for you i mean just emotionally too not just physically oh, yeah. it's yeah. like it's a really hard brutal brutal world and kia stevens was a professional oh, wrestler yeah. who plays mm-hmm. tma yeah. so we've also mm-hmm. heard a lot of stories through her um but getting to see real wrestling i'm like holy crap like at least for us we choreograph our fights mm-hmm. and you and you practice them for hours like when we went to um smackdown two of the wrestlers didn't even know they were like they had a fight that day they were like well oh, well we're just going i was like you're just gonna go out there and like wing it <laughs> like i don't under i could never that's why yeah I, we didn't wing it just fyi uh <laughs> we were we worked all week to do one match you know it's, it was like that's not what we did either but you know when we were when we were you know wrestling and we were training we did have like our favorites, you know, like I always like loved when I was paired up with like some person because we were, I could trust her. She was really strong. I mean, do you have a favorite that you've been in the ring yet? That's kind of, you've gravitated to. It's like, I get to wrestle with. Well, I don't, I, I haven't really had like a full match yet. Well, so just kind of like practicing. Training, yeah. yeah. I mean, the way training works is though we're always jumping in. It'll be mm-hmm. like, okay, Brit and Gale, and then the next day I'm, I'm mm-hmm. wrestling Sadell, right. and then I'm wrestling Ellen. And I think I don't have a favorite really. It's just kind of learning each body is so different. Right. Like mm-hmm. I'm pretty tall, so when I'm wrestling right. Ellen, it's very different yes. than than yeah. you know wrestling like Sid, who's yeah. you know more. Athletic, I mean, obviously yeah, Sid yeah. is yeah. way more athletic than me, yeah. but we're at least like yeah similar builds kind of height wise at least it'll Um, come there's going to be a day that comes where you're going to be like oh my god we've been doing so much work together and now i'm with so and so and this is what i love about wrestling right there are i feel like there's certain times where you just like really vibe yeah and and you're totally in it and you're both Mm -hmm. you're on the same wavelength um there's other times where you know, one of us is giving it their all and the other one's still trying to figure out, like, <laughs> yeah. wait right. a second, slow down. I don't have this move, the schoolboy down yet right. or whatever. Right. Like, yeah. um, so yes, there are those moments. Yeah. But overall, I think it's it's smart that we're always jumping in where mm-hmm. he, we almost aren't given the opportunity to develop, like, a mm-hmm. favorite team where you're like, mm-hmm. all right, I'm always going to be wrestling Jackie or, yeah. you know, we don't, yeah. um, which well, is good because writing – Writing wise, we're always jumping in and out. So this is my favorite question that I've been asking everybody. Oh boy! So I got to see my, my my dream sequence a little bit in episode ten, the battle royal. Mm. So my question now is, based on what you know about everybody's personalities and their, their their training, their wrestling skills, and everything, if you put all of you ladies in there, not scripted, who do you think would end up victorious? So Mark came in here. He said that. Mariana, Vicky Viking, is a good dark horse. Mm. Kia herself said Betty Gilpin. Oh. Jackie and Rebecca both said Kate Nash. And so I'm, I wonder like, who you think. And like Brittany, when she was here last year, she said Ellen Wong. So Ooh. I want to know who you think is the dirtiest player in that game that would sit there and be like, yes, yeah, she would win. Okay, Betty's phenomenal, but I don't count her because she's had so much extra time than than a lot of us have. Right. Because Ooh. she has like huge mm-hmm. matches. So mm-hmm. they've been tra- – I mean, even – the pilot episode, Allie and Betty had to do that dream sequence that looked yeah. like they were at a level like 10 when we were still. Right. So they were doing like way more. Um, so Betty's phenomenal, one of the strongest. But not counting Betty, I would say I would say Gail, who plays she- Sheila. Sheila, wow, she- oh, amazing. And I think that Gail, like her personality is pretty low key. She doesn't, yes. she's not like the loudest one. So, but she, I think she's a phenomenal wrestler and I think even even watching um and Kate's obviously amazing too and watching them wrestle I think it was maybe it was early in the season episode two maybe where they're all kind of auditioning I was like damn Gail's doing these like back you know back somersaults and and I love like the Sheila. I don't know. She she can bite people. She's no, no, got no, I love it. I love she's that. Got a, that she's like a dark answer. horse. She's I love dark, that answer. No, I love wolf. it. It works the for dark me. Wolf it works like for me. That. I think people underestimate. You know, 
uh, Gail's Gail's abilities in the ring. Well, we're running out of time, unfortunately, because we could probably talk to you all day long (laughs) about everything glow. But I do want to know, Britt, what you have coming up uh, moving forward now that, I mean, we're obviously hoping win glow season three but outside of that (laughs) what are you up to i have a show coming out on sony crackle which is their free streaming service um on thursday the 23rd (gasps) called rob riggles ski master academy and it's a crazy comedy it's some of the producers that did wet hot american summer so it's like that we shot it there too so it's like that absurdist even more so comedy it's so there's like paul Shear is in it eliza coop Amazing. um david arquette uh, wow. cheech cheech marin <laughs> cheech and Chong. i have david, a ton of david scenes arquette, with who's also a wrestler he wait david arquette are you not aware no I wasn't either. he's a, he's a, he's a former WCW either. world champion and uh he just came back to pro wrestling uh last month nope didn't i actually I no even idea. didn't, didn't been, even get to meet him he's been training real hard for about four or five months um but yeah He's a former world champion. Uh, wow. You learn something new right here every day. Wow. I'm going to be paying more attention yeah, to that. Yeah. I'm really pissed I didn't. I wasn't on set with him I, that day. I mean, I, I'm not surprised you didn't bring it up, but it, that that's funny that no I wonder one, if no he would have brought, brought it up. It up for I think someone else network. would have had to br- bring it up. Yeah, because he, he's... That's why I got, that's why I got yeah. Bill here. Just about Modest, you know, exactly. maybe. Bill is our writing and our expert here on wrestling, so we thank you so much for that. Really? Yeah, yeah that's right cool. There. Thank you, Bill. Oh, wow. So we got some wrestling on the, on the Ski Master, but it's really funny. It's about um, a jet ski academy and like a different... It's just so insane. It was really fun. And my character is so far from Justine. She plays this like... Um, instructor that's dying to teach jet ski stunts and isn't allowed to and so it's just I mean it's so crazy it's really funny comedy I'm looking forward to that yeah Yeah, that's so exciting well thank you so much thank you for joining us this was great finally I know hey you're 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 always welcome though you're always welcome so don't worry it's cool to finally be in the studio and see right isn't it fun yeah 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 it's really cool thank you all so so much for being with us all season long, uh, watching all of the Glow After shows. So be sure to go back and watch all of our amazing interviews with everyone from Glow Season 2. And hopefully we will see you again next season, fingers crossed. Again, my name is Candace Cruz. You can find me on all my social media at Candace R. Cruz. And I'm Rick Hong. You can find me on all social media at Rick Hong, R-I-C-K-H-O-N-G. You can find me, uh, Little Egypt, at, at Little Egypt. <laughs> And I'm at Britt Barron across the board. Yeah, Perfect. You can find me on all social media, send out Motel, and check me out on the Up Rocks with Spandex podcast. Awesome. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for Thank watching. You. Thank Bye. you. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later! later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.